Let's go through the process of getting fat from the diet into your blood and then, and then use that as a segue to, the, to, to then dive into the studies that actually explore the role of dietary saturated fat on insulin resistance. All right. So much of the action when it comes to fat digestion, practically all of it is the small intestine. Yes, we've been chewing the food. Yes, we've been churning the food around in the stomach, but there's nothing really happening until we get to the small intestine. At that point, the fat is interacting with bile salts from the small in, from the from the liver that have that has then been stored in the gallbladder. So the fat is coming down, the gallbladder contracts thereby reducing the risk of gallstones, moving the bile into the small intestine, and then the bile will separate the fat all out. You know, fat wants to clump together. And so this, the bile will pull it apart into the small little blobs. That's a process called emulsification. You've heard of emulsifiers or emulsification before. That's what's happening there with the bile salts. Now the molecules are small enough to be acted on by an enzyme and a series of enzymes called lipase. So the lipase starts snipping off the individual fatty acids of triglycerides. So here's a triglyceride. My knuckles are the glycerol backbone, and then these three fingers are the individual fatty acids. So the lipase comes in and will snip one of them off. All right, there's one fatty acid now that's just floating. Then it'll come in and snip the other one off, and then we're left with a, what's called a monoglycerol or monoglyceride, where you have one fatty acid bound to the glycerol backbone. And then these are small enough um, to get moved in to the intestinal wall. So now they can pull in and get absorbed by the epithelial cells or the cells that are lining the intestine. Once they get pulled in, they actually get re-esterified. That's the technical term to say that they all just kind of get lumped back together. So let's go back to me awkwardly acting this out here. Here's the fatty acid bound to the glycerol backbone, but you'll recall there's an empty spot for two more. So re-esterification is taking this fatty acid and boom, popping it back on. Taking this other fatty acid and boom, popping it back on. So now we have a triglyceride that's been reformed. And now within the wall of the intestine, with all of these reformed triglycerides, it will package them all up with the lipids, with these the, the fats we've eaten, the triglycerides, other lipids like cholesterol and phospholipids and some proteins and lump them together in a bigger molecule called a chylomicron. Now the chylomicron is big, big enough that it's not easily moving into the blood through into a capillary into the bloodstream. And so it doesn't go into the bloodstream. It goes into the lymph system. And so the lymph system is carrying these chylomicrons and then it deposits them into the blood through this area up in the thoracic cavity. That's where lymph meets back up with blood. So lymph comes from blood. Um, that's a topic for another time, but flowing slowly through the body, ultimately getting its way back to the blood. And so the chylomicrons now, these big fatty protein complexes, come back into the blood then. Now, the journey's not over yet. And remember, we're talking about the digestion of fats because the idea is that if you eat saturated fats, you'll get insulin resistance. So the chylomicron now is in the blood and now it can be acted on. So now we'll have lipoprotein lipase, a different version of the lipase that was in the, in the guts that was cutting off the fatty acids. We have a, now a different version through the blood vessels, through the capillaries, and they're cutting off fatty acids and now absorbing them into the cell. And so the free fatty acids will be pulled in. But at that point, it's possible that they can bind any kind of receptors like TLR4. All right. And then we have the chylomicron remnant having dropped off a lot of fat throughout the body. It can go to the liver and get reprocessed.